Today I plan on making a air fuel ratio test meter and I bought some stuff and I thought I'd just share it with you in case anybody else out there wanted to make one. Firstly I bought an air fuel ratio meter from this group, Innovate. It's basically gives you a digital readout and it self calibrates with this as a process to go through to calibrate it and that seemed to be quite a reasonable thing. I bought a box for it to go in deep enough to hold the meter and the cables and here is the um, actual air fuel ratio sorry the oxygen sensor right here which got the special cap on it and I've actually just kind of screwed it or clamped it to a couple of welding rods which I've clamped to this little clamp here and that's going to go in the exhaust pipe and that will then give us a reasonable reading. I am waiting on some heat proof shielding just to go to the top of all that um, but that's my plan there, there's some rubber, little rubber feet to go on the bottom of that box. On the other end of the, uh, the actual oxygen sensor is this cable connects to, and this cable connects for that connector there onto uh, this connector here. However, that's only eight foot long, and uh, some of the cars that I'll be working on, that may be long, not long enough. So I'm going to extend it with another couple of meters of uh, wire. So I've bought some six-way Deutsch connectors, which will extend that as needed. And then as far as the power is concerned, well, I've bought uh, a Neutrik Speak On NL4 connector and some Speak On plugs. So I'll actually mount that on the side of the box and that will, uh, I'll then have options to either connect to cigarette lighter or I might make it fly out leads with um, clamps or in the Land Rover that I often work on, it's got little uh, power takeoff banana connectors inside the cabin so it, it doesn't have a cigarette lighter. So just leaving myself up with a number of options there of how to connect 12 volts to it. So that's the basic starting place and I'll sort of keep you informed as I go along. So I'm just looking at the wiring diagram and in essence if I look at the actual wires coming out of here it's got a black, a white, a red and a yellow. The red goes to positive according to the diagram or the instructions black goes to earth and white is uh, if you are going to install this in your dash and you want to be able to dim the lights when the headlights go on so you don't get blinded by the LED display you connect this one to your headlight circuit but as we're not going to be doing that in this truck so if we're not using that then we should connect that to ground and the yellow is all to do with uh, data logging and ECUs which we won't be using so that's just going to be left not connected so that's the next step so drilled holes in the box that's for the meter and those are for my connectors on the end okay so I'm at the next step now I've mounted the uh, air fuel ratio in the box there. I've um, put the speak on connector in there, so that's uh, power in there. And this is the uh, oxygen sensor lead, so that just clips in there. It's hard doing it one handed, of course. That pushes in there, twists, so that's a positive lock. There we go. And that there with a Deutsch connector, six way Deutsch connector, will connect up to the, the lead to go to the oxygen sensor, which is there. And that end then connects to the actual sensor itself, which goes to the, um, into the exhaust pipe. However, that's not going to be long enough, so I've made an extension with some just trailer, seven-way trailer leads. I only needed five leads in there, but so six-way connectors both ends, so that can extend it nicely. Last thing, I've finally my has arrived my uh, insulation tape. This foily stuff is going to go around here, so that we don't uh, melt stuff. So I'll hook that up, and then I'll. So the next step. So I've wrapped that in the insulation foil there. It's got like an insulation, like an asbestos or some sort of, I presume it's not asbestos, some sort of foil with um, material underneath it to sort of give it some protection. Now I'm going to try it. We've got to first plug it in and it's got to calibrate the uh, oxygen sensor and then we'll see how we go. I'm also going to wrap a little bit of just some foam around this connector here so that it's not going to rub on the bodywork of the car. 
Okay, so I've got the box mounted in the car. We're now going to go through the calibration process. You can see I plugged in the lead there. So it's supposed to, if I just turn it on without the actual oxygen sensor plugged in, then it should rotate through all the little LEDs and then it should uh, give me a little E2 message which says no connector. I'm supposed to leave it on in that situation for 30 seconds. So here we go, turning it on now. It's doing its thing. This is the first time E2, so it's correct. It's not got a sensor and I have to leave it like that for 30 seconds. So here you can see I run a lead out the window and there's my exhaust pipe. On the ground is the sensor. I have to leave it open to the air before I do the next part of the calibration. So that's obviously in air at the moment. So you can see the cable coming in through the rear window there. Extended it and using those Deutsch connectors, that's all connected up there. So now if I turn it on, it should go through a calibration process. Here we go. Heat's got a heat for a while. I believe that takes uh, 30 or 60 seconds or so. The reason why I built this box is because uh, I drive a carburetor based car. It's a 1962 Mini with an SU carburetor and it's very difficult to judge exactly if the mixture is correct. And uh, when you go on the dyno, they obviously do an air fuel ratio uh, comparison, but that doesn't necessarily uh, equate to the real world. Okay, look. There you go, it's calibrated, and it says 22.4, which is uh, what basic air is, so that's correct, so it's calibrated now, which is great. Okay, so I've replaced the, um, I've put the oxygen sensor into the exhaust pipe, and now we'll start up and see what happens. A bit of choke, because it's a little bit cold. I've got a push start button on the floor there, so. <laughs> Okay, so there you go, an air fuel ratio test meter. So I've just used the air fuel ratio now, air fuel ratio meter now, first time and it's all worked very well. However, I'm not too sure that the insulation was very effective, basically got blown off in the exhaust pipe. But certainly the silicon cable here that's around the um, oxygen sensor has not fared too badly so I don't think I need this and I'll just secure that a bit better for the next twist but otherwise it's worked very well and I've adjusted my carburetor appropriately so all in all it's been a win-win.